Hello and welcome. If you are new here, hi, my name is Tina. I am a six year teacher on the coast of Maine and this year I'm an upper elementary science and health teacher. And as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to give you a classroom tour. It is my number one most requested video and I'm so excited to do this for you. Now, before we dive into this, I do want to preface this with a couple of talking points. First things first, number one is yes, I spend a lot of money above and beyond what districts budget for me to spend in my classroom. That is my personal choice. It does not make me better than anybody else. It does not make me a better teacher by any means. I do it because I want to, not because I have to. I could show up to a bare bones classroom and teach the same way that I do if I didn't have all of this stuff. And I choose to do it because I spend eight hours of my day in this classroom, if not more, and I want it to be a calm, relaxing, inviting place for me and my students. I have to be here with them too. So I want it to feel me. I want it to feel comfortable. I want it to be an extension of who I am and I want it to feel like home. So if you are here to comment on how much teachers spend on their classroom and that they shouldn't, please keep it to yourself. How I decide to spend my money has nothing to do with you. Second, this is very much a real classroom tour. We have been in school, this is our second full week. So we've been in school for three weeks, but it's our second full one. Uh, and my classroom is a hot mess. There are things that are unfinished. There are things that are not where they are supposed to be. There are still boxes and it is not perfect, but it is where we learn and the kids love being here. I love being here and it's where we grow and we make mistakes and it is not Pinterest perfect. And I think that's what makes it perfect. It's like perfectly imperfect. The kids are here, they're safe, they're happy, they're loved and they're doing hard things. So I, that's really all I want to say because my classroom is not perfect. And I think that's why I wanted to film this now is because it needs some work. It needs some TLC, but we are still here every day doing the darn thing. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and we are going to jump into the classroom tour for the 22, 23 school year. Let's get this started. Okay, so we are gonna start over here uh, with pretty much my favorite part of the room, which is like this entire wall. And like I said, this is a very real vlog and I will prove that to you because there's a box of cups on the floor that is waiting to go to another teacher. I have literally had this since May and it just keeps getting moved around and honestly, the kids just keep grabbing cups from it. So we are ignoring this. This here is our affirmation mirror. Hi, how are you? Uh, so I have this one at the top because this is something that I say to my students every single time they take a test and it is the most important thing I want students to learn in my classroom above literally anything else. And then we have all of these affirmations going down the sides. I purchased these dots on TPT and then I just added some Amy Grossbeck fonts so I can try to link all of this stuff for you um, and just tell you what I used for each. But that is our affirmation station. I think I use this mirror more than the kids do, but they have been using it more and more as the year goes on, so that's really exciting. And then over on this first whiteboard, I have this little everyone is welcome here sign from TJ Maxx. Uh, I will try to link something similar. I don't know like if they still carry it, but up on top, I have my name in vinyl because kids ask me how to spell my name all the time and they call me Miss Mario and it drives me bananas. Over here, I have I can statements from last school year. Told you, we are real and transparent over here. Uh, the reason that these are still here is because I discuss them every single day with my students uh, on this board because they're on a slide. So I actually don't even refer to these anymore. I do want to put these up. That way, if I don't have the slide up, they are still able to look at it. And then I just have these magnetic spice racks from Amazon. They are linked in my Amazon storefront as well as in my description. I have this fake plant from TJ Maxx and we are currently on a rocks and fossils and landscapes unit, weathering, erosion, deposition, all those good things. Kind of just lumping it all into one big thing. But these are some mentor texts that I am referring to while we are reading. This is here because I literally just moved a book that was there but that is one of the whiteboards. And then up here, we have our student supply center. So we'll start with this. I get the most questions on this thing. 
So these are actually just two three by three bins that are stacked on top of one another. And they do make these, uh, the brand Arteza makes them, but they are double the price. But I got these at TJ Maxx and I love them because they house the markers in rainbow order. Students can see exactly which color they're grabbing. And then in the back, there's like a little divider that I put in there. And then I have extra markers just in case they go missing. Students can grab a cap and we don't have any dried out markers. Next to our markers, I have some clipboards. I am big on letting my students work around the room wherever they are comfortable and will be successful. So they are welcome to grab a clipboard and go move. And I just have this like file folder organizer thing. It's like one of those stacked ones. So that is what my students use. And that is just where they go. And I actually didn't even have to clean this up. So I'm really proud of them. None of this has been like straightened up since they last touched it all. Speaking of not straightening up, can we talk about the fact that they every day make sure that their friends put the markers back pacing the same way you guys it's unreal all right so we're just going to continue across the top this little two by two like cubicle storage thing they sell them at walmart ikea target uh you name it they sell it uh right on top we have this straw dispenser from amazon i love it normally i have it stocked with pencils but being completely honest i did not have any pencils for my kids until like the second or third day of school because I forgot to put them out. So that is leftover pencils from last year that I pulled out of a Ziploc bag that I put away. Um, these are pencils that need to be sharpened. I tell my kids that I will put them away in here. You just need to put them in the cup. And then I have this Sterilite bin. What this does is it houses our homeless crayons. So at the end of the day, when students are cleaning up, any crayons that they find go in this homeless crayons drawer. And if they are coloring and realize they don't have a blue crayon, they can come grab one. Uh, and that's just where they go. I always empty a fresh box or two to start the year. That way, if crayons go missing, we have extras and on par with the rest of the things, labels are falling off. This drawer has extra cap erasers and chunk erasers. Normally, I have to replace erasers. I don't go through pencils a lot during the school year, but I do go through erasers like crazy. I swear my erasers are multiplying this year. There are erase more erasers in here than I put to start. So don't know where they're coming from, but not complaining. And then I just have some pencil grips down in this bottom drawer for students that like those. And then these baskets, I have two that are filled right now and two that are empty. They're all Sterilite bins. The top left one has lined paper because we are using binders this year. And then this side just has lined paper. And then all of these supply bins right now, they're pretty bare and also mislabeled. But highlighters, we don't have a ton. I need to get more from our supply room downstairs. Pens, my students love pencils. I've told them they can use pens, but they choose not to. So I just have a bag of dry erase markers in there for right now. Pencils is empty because we're using that. Um, scissors, glue sticks, crayons down here, and then colored pencils. And our crayons are in these little, they're like card slash crayon boxes from Walmart. There's a highlighter in here. And then in the back, I just have a little Sterilite bin of some Colors of the World crayons. And then for colored pencils, we do have more, but they are all out on tables. So my students have caddies and they tend to keep them in there. So there's just a couple of extra bins in here just in case students want them. So that is our student supply shelf area, student supply area, whatever. Students have free access to anything in here as long as I'm not in the middle of teaching and they're not using it to destroy anything or, you know, be hurtful. I do not monitor this area at all. So if it's up here, they have free access to it. Around my whiteboard, I do have some LED lights. These are linked in my Amazon storefront as well as in my description box below. These are LED bulbs, so they don't get hot to the touch or warm to the touch, and I absolutely love them. They're like that, kind of like that warm yellow. They're not very cool for LEDs, which makes me very happy. And with the lights off, it's just the perfect little touch. But continuing on, middle whiteboard doesn't have anything exciting. I've got my projector up there, Apple TV, because we are all Apple. So we have Apple MacBook Airs from the district that they gave us, as well as iPads. And you can stream up to the Apple TV. I know you're super out of focus. It actually looks really cool, but I really need it to come back. And then on this board over here, this is just kind of my area. So over here I have my acrylic dry erase marker holder because on whatever whiteboard I'm writing on, I do not like anything along the ledge with the exception of my pointer finger because for some reason things just always end up on the floor and it drives me crazy. So this keeps my ledge clean. Up here I have this magnetic dry erase 
dry eraser, dry erase eraser, whatever. Um, but I have that here and I like this one because it is magnetic. It gets it off the ledge. However, this is my old one and they replaced this one with this one and like the size comparison, it, it makes no sense to me, but whatever. I'm too attached to this one to get rid of it. They don't make the refill heads anymore, but I refuse to part with it. So I kind of use both. And then up top, I have my date cards. These are my retro date flip cards that are in my TPT store if you're interested. And then I just have some black vinyl because I don't like writing on the board. That was always my dream as a kid. It was like, I'm the one that gets to write on the board, but now as an adult, I just, I don't like it. But my date cards are just up there with a magnetic curtain rod. And then over here, I just put the year up with magnet tape because it takes up less room on the rod and I don't have to worry about changing that one ever except once a year. And then over here are our schedule cards. I don't have these in TPT, however, uh, they are the same color from the date cards. So they match without being like overly matchy. I felt like it would've been too much with like the smiley faces and the whole retro thing, but I do like the color. So that is our schedule for today or was our schedule for today. And then same thing up there. I just have it in black permanent vinyl and that's where our schedule lives. Along the ledge over here, I have some partner cards. I keep these here just in case I ever need to have my students partner up. These are some labels that have never made it onto bins. This is a pointer that was here when I started. I don't know, it just kind of lives here. And then this is a canvas that a student painted for me last school year. And then also over here in my little corner, I got this FlexiSpot standing desk uh, in a collaboration with FlexiSpot. I am obsessed with it. I teach from it all day, every day. I do usually have it at the standing height and I love that I can just set it and forget it and go pass stuff out and like it'll be where I need it to be when I come back. My other favorite thing is as a teacher, like I try to keep post-it notes or something handy to take notes all the time. But if I don't like you guys, you can just draw on it because it's glass and it erases and it's gone it was never there so that is like one of my favorite things and this desk I do keep my schedule cards tucked over in this corner along with some extra magnet tape just in case I also have a wireless keyboard and mouse in here just in case I ever need it over on my closet door I'm not gonna show you the closet because it's a mess again if you have watched my vlogs you know the saga with the closet but this closet door has some quick keyboarding tips on here I've been meaning to put these on TPT and I have them made ready to go I just haven't listed them yet but these are some just keyboard like tech tip posters that my students use on a regular basis. In this corner is our little Keurig station. And I say our because my co-teacher literally comes and uses it every single day. But I have this, um, I think it's called the K Slim and I'm obsessed with some K cups. We also keep a whole basket of them in here. And then in my closet, we do have a fridge. So in here is my coffee creamer and my coworkers coffee creamer and then like breakfast and lunch and we can heat coffee up or food up or whatever but yeah so that's our little coffee station i put this little thing here to hide the cable back there because i'm extra like that that little extra plant i think is from tj maxx i don't know and that is from hobby lobby and then moving on to my supply area so these bin labels are the same as my date cards and these are my daily drawers. So any worksheets that I run off for the week go in here. I have really, with having 80 students every single day, I've really tried to shy away from worksheets, but sometimes they are inevitable. And that is where they would go. Top are these clear folders. You can kind of see there's some writing left over from last year, but these are for any missing work. So anything that I do hand out, I will label it in the missing worksheet like Google sheet that I make. That way students can come match it to the name and they know exactly which one to grab. Over here I have my teacher toolbox, which God's honest truth, don't really use. I do use the tape religiously and the band-aid drawer religiously. Other than that, it's all a waste. I used to use it all the time, but as I've gotten farther into my teaching career, I've used it less and less. I also have another one of those storage containers which houses all of my Crayola markers and this one is housing like all of my pens and pencils. Not quite in rainbow order, but Close enough. In this area, I also keep my ALEXA picture of Dusty and I 
picture of my dogs, and then back there, it is perfectly blocked, but it's a picture of a former student and I that she gave me when I left my last school, and that's framed back there, and it's just, oh, it makes my heart so, so happy. My monster plant growing like a weed, obsessed with that thing. Uh, this lamp is from Walmart, and my favorite part of all of my lamps in my classroom are these remotes. They are wireless transmitters, so you can use any light that you want. It does not have to be like a specific one, but you plug it in, just leave it turned on, like on the lamp itself, and it will turn everything on and off without you having to walk around. Also behind my desk, I have my pencil sharpener. This is my really, really good one that I use. I do let students use it sometimes. I usually keep salt back here. I know it's really random, but I use it every day for lunch. My water, I have an air plant in this little terrarium here, and then another plant. And down here, I have my candy bins. This is basically a junk bin. No idea what's in there. And then these are holding all of my stickers. Moving on. In this corner, I have all of our flexible seating stuff. So all of our lap desks, lap trays. I have a buoy because I teach and live in a lobster community. So it's just like a little, you know, tribute to them. Another plant over here. There's really not much over here. So we're going pretty quickly through this corner. This is my pothos. It's actually, it drags on the floor. Somebody stepped on that poor leaf, but I just kind of tucked it up there for now so we could sweep. And this has all of our block drawers. So similar to my daily drawers, this is where my students will hand in any work that they've done. And it's labeled with their block numbers. And then down there are forms that go to me or the office. In this bin are yoga mats um, that my students can use. I bought all of these yoga mats at five below and I just cut them into thirds. Now that I'm teaching students that are a little bit older, I would probably just cut them in half instead of in thirds, but students can take these and work around the room so they know that if they are done with them, they just fold them in half and they leave them in the bin. So that is just a big old bin of yoga mats. Up here are some milk crates from Walmart in like that greenish, grayish color and pinks housing all of our binders that we use for science every day. Up the top are our race strategy posters. I really want to make new ones because I don't really have this farmhouse like thing going on anymore, but I'm too lazy to do it. So I just reuse this year after year, even though every year I say that I will redo it, but I haven't yet. This is another like flexible option for students. Um, it is a rolling standing desk, but they did lower it so that they could lean on it and stuff. This was mine. I used to use this to teach when we taught hybrid because I taught online and remote at the same time. And I was so sick of just sitting at my desk. So I've kind of just given it to them and they really seem to be enjoying having like this option to use. They can use it seated. They can use it standing, whatever they want to do. And then this table came with my classroom. So I don't know where the table came from, but these pillows are from Walmart and they can use them underneath their knees at this table to like sit and work or kneel and work, whatever they want to do. On top of the table, I just have this tiny little basket. This used to have pencils in it. They've all wandered off. And then we just had some color pencils. I've been meaning to put like a cute fake plant up there, but that hasn't really happened yet. Maybe one day. Continuing over, um, I have our scientific method bulletin board going on over here. Uh, our pencil sharpener, this is our community pencil sharpener, so they can sharpen whatever they want in it, including colored pencils, I don't even care. This came with the classroom, it's pretty old, you can tell. But I just keep some coloring pages in there and then there's scratch paper, scrap paper down at the bottom. Next to it are dry erase boards. Honestly, forgot they were here until I did this tour right now. So we're gonna pretend like I totally knew that. And then this is our ketchup bin. So I don't teach just fifth grade anymore. Remember, we're, we're being real over here. Um, but basically, this is where any work I hand out, any worksheets that I hand out when students are not here will come into this bin. And I dropped them all. But they are labeled with their block number. So if a student from block 1.2 was out, they would come to block 1.2, find paper and then go. I will put them in here and then if I have any like extras above and beyond what I've already put into the folders I always put them in the back that way if a student loses them whatever's there is all we have. This is my third sink in my classroom because I teach science so there's one over by my desk which I skipped over and there is also one in that closet that I did not show you. And then this is my hot mess of a corner. These books do need to go on the shelf but 
I went through probably about five or 600 books last school year. Some of these are to donate, give away, some that I don't want, some that I just honestly don't even remember and I need to find a home for them. But this is what I meant when I said that this was just gonna be like a real tour, so yeah. Also, my doorbell, I have one plugged in back here. I will show you the other one. Hopefully I don't forget, but I do keep one uh, receiver back here. This is our iPad cart. So this is where all of our students keep their iPads as well as charge them. And then our bulletin board that I totally knocked out this morning. And then our classroom library, which is pretty much empty. So most of these books were what I kept from the last teacher when she left like hundreds of books behind. That book and the last two books at the end I purchased and they are new as mentor texts. Those two in the middle have to do with our unit. All of these bin labels, I have new ones, I just haven't printed off. These are my author or series bins. I have about 300 books in storage that I still need to bring in. So I did not have this set up until about two hours ago because I had every intention of painting these two shelves and just never got around to it. And then over here, right by the front door, I have some Storex mailboxes with numbers and these are their classroom mailboxes. So the way that it works is every student has a folder and that is their take home folder. They put it in their bin in the mornings and any papers that need to go home, graded papers, papers from the office, whatever it may be, go into their bin and then they pack it up at the end of the day. And as of today, I started letting them keep their library books in there just because they didn't really have anywhere else to keep them. And they, they really seem to like having them in the room. So that was really exciting, but this is, our mailbox area and then up here I have this lock box so I keep the key I'm trying to get it without showing my ID tag the key on my lanyard so students are welcome to fill out this I wish my teacher knew note and basically they can tell me anything they want to tell me I tell them it could be bad it could be happy it could be sad it could be exciting it could be random whatever they want it to be and then they just fill out this bottom and I do check it periodically and like I said it locks and my students know that so they know that whatever they put in there is safe and for our eyes only our sign out clipboard for the bathroom and then over here hanging next to the door is our bathroom pass which I'm not going to touch much more than this because well, kids don't wash their hands, but those are from PVC invites. I will link that in the description down below. And then before I forget the doorbell, so I have my other transmitter up here. And then normally throughout the day, I carry this with me. And that is how I get students attention. When I'm working, I'm sitting at this hot mess of a desk. This is where I typically am when I'm not actively teaching at my standing desk and this is the overview of my classroom typically there are stools on top of the desks at this time of day but because we have open house we just didn't bother uh, my students do have wobble stools every single table that's all they have i have requested regular chairs just due to safety issues and like focus issues but my students do have access to regular chairs so there are a bunch around the room that they have access to and that they are allowed to use as needed if they want to. So this is what our classroom looks like as far as like the learning area. And then each table has a caddy. Don't know why there's headphones in this one, but everyone has crayons and colored pencils. There were markers in them, but I think somebody put those all away today. So yeah. So just one more quick pan. This is my upper elementary science and health classroom. Uh, it's pretty bare bones because this is only my first full year in this position and I'm still kind of figuring out what I want to put where. I have so many posters to put up as far as like people in STEM that I want to hang up and a scientist alphabet poster. So there's not much out. I'm also very much like, you know, keep things minimalistic. That way it's not overwhelming for students, but I also do want to bring some more personality into it but yeah so this is our classroom and if there was something in the video that i did not mention feel free to ask questions in the comments down below i will try my best to understand what you are asking Timestamps are a huge help guys but if there's anything that you have any questions about please drop a comment down below let me know and I'm really hoping I didn't miss anything. So yeah, that is our classroom. Thank you so much if you made it to the end. I appreciate your support. I'm going to go get ready for open house. So 
as always thank you so so much for watching especially if you've made it this far if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet be sure to hit subscribe and join our family and i will catch you guys next week